Welcome to the Connect with TrueSight webinar series. During today's event, you'll be able to ask questions of our panelists. The questions and answers along with today's broadcast will be published to the YouTube channel. Today's topic is TSOM Cell Breast Practices and Troubleshooting. Steve Mundy will take us through this content. Over to you, Steve. Thank you, Greg, and hello, everyone. As mentioned, I'm Steve Mundy, a Principal Technical Support Analyst, and I've been at BMC for over 25 years, always working within customer support. Here is the agenda for today's webinar. We will start off with an overview of the cell before reviewing key configuration and then onto best practices, which should help with smooth running of the cell. We will then look at troubleshooting common issues. Here is an architecture slide, but where exactly is the cell? There will be a cell on the infrastructure management server. It will also be on the integration service node, ISN, if cell was also selected to be installed when installing the ISN. A cell can be installed on any other Windows or Linux server. There does not have to be any other TrueSight component on that server for the cell to be installed and function. So what exactly is the cell? In simple terms, it is an event processing engine. It can receive events and enrich events from a variety of sources, such as an event adapter, an API, another cell, an integration, or a command such as msend. It will analyze and process events based on event rules defined in the knowledge base, otherwise known as the KB. If there is a service model present in the cell, the cell will perform impact calculations if there is a causal event that has impacted the model and propagate that impact status to related components in the model. It can propagate events to another destination, such as another cell or to an integration. The cell can execute external scripts as defined in the KB. It can create incidents in another integration, such as ITSM. It can also trigger email notifications based on event criteria. The cell configuration file is called mcell.conf and is in the cell-specific etc directory. Any cell configuration file can be in the cell-specific directory below mcell underscore home slash etc. If a configuration file exists in the cell-specific directory, it takes precedence over the file in the mcell underscore home slash etc directory and is used instead. This allows for different configurations between cells on the same system. Command M get info of the param option can be executed against the running cell and will display the configuration parameters and their values. The first part of the output are the default values and the second part are the overridden or changed ones. That is why you may see duplicate parameter names in the output. The cell directory file is called mcell.dir and is in the etc directory. There will be an entry for the cell itself as well as all the other cells, servers and gateways that this cell will need to connect to. Each entry contains a type, name, encryption key, host and port information. Here is an example directory listing of the cell var directory. You may wonder where the name var came from. The name var is short for variable as the contents change. Let's look at the purpose of each of the files. The datid.txt file contains the highest data handle value of the data instances. The evtid.txt file contains the highest event handle value of the events. The mcdb is the most important file. It is sometimes referred to as the state file and is the state of the cell at a particular point in time. It contains data instances, events, timers, propagation buffers, and so on. The cell reads the mcdb file only once, which is during startup. The three mcdb files below this with the strange looking extensions are previous mcdb files, otherwise referred to as historical mcdb files. The extension is a hexadecimal timestamp of when the file was created. The files with sm prefix are all related to the service model and will typically only be present on the tsim server cell. The smdb file contains the current service model. The smdb0 file contains the previous service model, which is the service model before the last publish. The smms0 file contains service model session information of the last publish. The exact file contains transactions that the cell has performed. For example, a new event received, update to event slots, changes and updates to propagation buffers, and so on. The three exact files below this are the historical exact files where the extension is a hexadecimal timestamp. When the cell is started, if there is an exact file present, an execution of state builder is forced, which will read the current mcdb file and apply the transaction from the exact file to create a new mcdb file. This new mcdb file is then read into memory by the cell during startup. That is the only time that the mcdb file is read by the cell. During normal running of the cell, it will write to the exact file. Here are some guidelines for rules. Understanding rule execution order is very important. The order is what is in the kbrules.load file, and the rule type. The image here shows the order of rule phase. For example, all refine rules are executed first from top to bottom order of the .load file, then all filter rules and so on. If there is a custom rule, then where should it be placed in the .load file? The simple answer is that it depends. For example, if it relies on a particular out-of-box rule executing first, then it will need to be below that. 
If, however, an event policy relies on something being set by the custom rule first, then the custom rule would be placed above im underscore internal in the .load file, as im underscore internal contains the rules for the event policies. The cell has an inbuilt profiler which can be enabled to measure the time spent to run each rule. This can be one of the tools to use when troubleshooting a cell high CPU issue and can help to identify inefficient or CPU intense rules. Do not make changes to any of the out-of-the-box KB files. Instead, take a copy, rename and edit the copies instead. Having efficient rules is key, so where possible have rules for specific event classes rather than the top level class called event. The updates all and using all clauses as well as the match rejects function can be resource intense, so try to limit their use wherever possible. If there are rules for integrations or configurations that are not used, then do not load them. For rules that make use of a high number of data instances or query in potentially large number of events, they can be a performance gain by rewriting the rules to use a hashed index. We will now take a look at cell profiling to see how it can measure the time spent to run each rule and help resolve a performance problem. The reported problem on this remote cell is that the cell is intermittently running high CPU and appears to be taking longer than expected to process new events. So the first thing we will do is we will open a command prompt and enable profiling. Execute command mcontrol minus send the cell name, profiling on. This has enabled the profiler. I will now send in 100 events to this cell. This is not an out of the box script, but a custom script. If we monitor the cell in task manager, we can see that the cell process is running 50% CPU. The cell is a single threaded process and this is a two CPU machine, which means it's actually using a whole CPU. We will just wait for these 100 events to complete. That is now completed and we can see the difference between the start and end times is approximately one minute. So it took about a minute to send in 100 events to the cell. We will now have a look at the profiling output by executing command mget info minus n cell name profiling. I will redirect the output to a file so it is easier to read. And I will open that output file in a notepad. If we look in the profiling output, we can see here profiling was on. It was on for a duration of 104.89 seconds. The output in this file is listed in ascending order. Least expensive at the beginning, most expensive at the bottom. It's always better when looking at profile and output just to go straight to the bottom of the file because that is where the most expensive rules will be listed. If we look at the last entry here, we will look at each column. The first column, 58.857, is the number of seconds spent in that particular rule. The second column, 101, is the number of times that rule has been invoked. The third column is the triggering condition, which is new event. The fourth column is the part of the rule. We then have the rule phase, which is refine, followed by the rule name, followed by the MRL file, and finally, the line number in that particular MRL file. If we divide the first column, by the second column, that will tell us the average per event. So I'll open up a calculator, 58.857 divided by 101. So each new event that's arriving at this cell is taking 0.5827 seconds in that rule alone. That is extremely expensive and we need to try and determine why. So we will go and take a look at that rule. Go to M cell home. ETC cell name, KB, rules, and it was set owner, MRL. It's a refine rule based off of event class. It has a using for object to owner, which appears to be a data class. It's looking for an object to owner data instance where the host slot of that data instance matches MC host of the event and object class of the data instance matches MC object class of the event. If it has found a match, it sets the MC owner slot of the event to be owner slot of the data instance. I suspect one reason for this being slow is that there are a high number of these 
object to owner data instances. So we will run an mQuery command to confirm that. mQuery minus n cell name, minus d for data instance, minus a for class, object to owner, minus s count. 341,739 of these data instances. That's a massive amount. To improve the performance of that rule, we should rewrite it so it uses a hashed index. This is the rule, and we will make changes to it so it includes an index. On the first line, index, then the index name, we will call it set underscore owner underscore index, followed by the data class, object to owner, so hashed index, and then we specify the slots of that data class, which are in this index host and object class followed by an end statement we then make a minor change here as well to make use of that index index then the index name set owner index followed by the index slots in the same order as the index definition $EV dot MC underscore host and dollar EV dot MC object class followed by dollar D which refers to the object to owner instances that will be retrieved through the indexes next two lines can be commented out we save that change go back to the command window recompile the cell KB with the MC comp command MC comp minus N cell name. We will then reload this KB. M control minus N cell name, reload KB. It will take a few seconds or so for the cell to come up. We will monitor it in task manager. What the reload KB does, it does a restart of the cell under the covers. We can see here it's now running high CPU as it's loading that MCDB file back into memory. That is now completed. We will now enable profiling again. M control minus N cell name, profiling on, and we will send in 100 events again. That was very quick. It took less than half a second. We will now obtain the profiling output and have a quick look at that. Open that in Notepad. It was on for approximately 50 seconds. If we look at the bottom of this profiling output, we can see that set owner is not shown anymore. It's part way up here. Total time spent shows a zero because it's negligible. And this rule is now very efficient because of that hashed index. This concludes the demo. With a HA cell, if the primary cell is restarted while the secondary is still down, this can result in the cells becoming out of sync as the messages from primary to secondary are only stored in a memory buffer and not persisted like regular propagation buffers are. Be mindful of this if HA cells need to be restarted. If the secondary is active due to the primary being down and then the primary is started, the default behavior is that auto sync will occur. What happens is that the secondary forces an execution of state builder to create a new MCDB file. And this new MCDB file is transmitted over to the primary where the primary reads into memory and then becomes active. With version 11.303, we introduced a change whereby if the secondary is down for more than six hours, which is the hash2 value of parameter destination buffer keep weight, then the primary will create a new MCDB file and transfer this over to the secondary. This ensures that the cells are in sync. If required, the value for hash2 on destination buffer keep weight can be reduced. For example, changing it from 6H to 1H will mean that if the secondary is down for more than one hour and started, then auto sync will occur. Consider implementing a tiered cell architecture. With this, events can be filtered out and processed in the lower tiers, then propagated up to a top-level presentation cell, i.e. the TSIM server cell. This will greatly reduce the load on the top-level cell as it would only perform minimal processing. Some customers have implemented a different cell for use by the rate process for just this purpose, and details on how to do that are in the BMC documentation. With each TSIM version, BMC will make changes to the default KB to resolve product defects or make functionality changes and improvements.
To take advantage of those changes, it is necessary to use the mmigrate utility, which will migrate the KB to the current version. For versions up to and including 11.304, it can be performed pre or post upgrade. With version 11.305, it is now mandatory pre upgrade only. When installing version 11.305, you'll be prompted for the location of the migrated KB. The installation of 11.305 will not proceed beyond that point. So please do not end up in a situation where you are in a production change window and you suddenly realize that you have to migrate the KB. It can be migrated well in advance of the installation itself. For pre-upgrade, the mmigrate utility and latest default KB is on the install media under the migrate KB directory. During upgrade, the installer prompts for the location of the migrated KB and verifies that the migrated KB can be compiled OK with MC Comp command before putting the migrated KB in place. With versions up to and including 11.304, if no is selected, the current cell KB is left untouched and the installation will still proceed. It is then recommended that the KB be migrated post upgrade at the earliest opportunity. In customer support, we have seen a number of cell related support cases which were resolved by migrating the cell KB. For example, customer is on version 11.304, but the cell KB was still on version 11.301 as it had not been migrated. Migrating the KB to version 11.304 resolved the issue they were facing. The mmigrate utility will only make changes to the BMC default KB files. If there are non BMC customers, custom KB files, these will remain untouched as the mmigrate utility merges customizations into the new KB, so you'll have your customizations in addition to any fixes in the latest release. Let's now take a look at the mmigrate utility to migrate a KB from 11.304 to 11.305. This is a TSIM 11.304 server that will shortly be upgraded to 11.305. I have already downloaded the 11.305 installation image which is here on my C drive. And if we drill down into it, we have a migrate KB folder, which contains the necessary files to run mmigrate. I will now open a command window on the bin directory, as that is where mmigrate should be executed from. The first thing to do is to create an output directory where the migrated KB will be written to. I will call it C temp migrated KB. It's necessary to set the mcell underscore home environment variable to this particular location here. Set mcell underscore home, that location. So it's that location, but without the bin part. Just verify it's been set correctly, which is correct. I will now run mmigrate, the minus z option to confirm this is definitely the 11.305 mmigrate. And then we can see here that it is. We will now run the mmigrate utility. The first option is the type of cell to be migrated. For the TSIM server embedded cell, it is the dash AP option. For remote cell, it will either be dash AE or dash AS. The next option is the path of the current KB including the cell name. If we just go here in Windows Explorer. This is it here. I'll copy that and I'll put it in double quotes because it contains space characters. The next option is the output location, which is C temp migrated KB followed by the cell name. Execute the command. We can see in the output that it was the 11.305 mmigrate that was executed. It's detected that the version of the KB is from 11.304. It's gone ahead and created the migrated KB, but it has reported one conflict. And if we look up in the messages in this output, we can see this warning here, which mentions a conflict. A conflict occurs if there has been a custom change made to a particular file and that same file has also been updated in the new default KB. In this example, we can see here that it's the mcsm root baroque file and the 115 is the actual line number in the file. What we will do now is we will go to the location of the migrated KB and have a look in the contents of that file to see exactly what the conflict is. C temp migrated KB cell name KB classes MCSM root baroque line 115 
we have this marker here which denotes the start of the conflict and it says that this following section is from this location i.e it was the existing kb we scroll down through this we then have this marker which denotes the end of that particular section and the next section is from the new default kb and this is the end marker for it and says here where that came from a decision now has to be made what we do about this conflict whether to keep what was there originally to have what is new or whether to merge them together if we go back to the custom definition we can see here that whoever updated this last put a comment in add in two custom slots for project x custom one and custom two are the slots that have been added and this is below the company and site entry if we have a look at the new definition we have company and site and then we have these two additional slots so it looks like these are new slots that were added as part of 11305 i want to retain those custom slots custom one and custom two i also want to have these new slots that have been added as part of 11305 so what i will do is i will copy these two lines I will add them to the definition here. I will then remove the conflict in section around the markers. And I'll remove this marker here. Save the file. The next thing to take care of in the new migrated KB is the KB data directory. During migration, the existing KB data directory is renamed to data.org and any custom files within that are copied to the new data directory. What happens is the .load file in the new KB data directory will not contain any custom entries had they been there previously. This is mentioned in our BMC documentation. If we go to the KB data directory, there is a custom file here, customdata.barot, but there may be other ones as well that I've added. What I will do is I will do a compare of the dot load here with the one in the data org. And we can see here that the 11305.load looks like this. The 11304.load, which is used as input, contain this. And it's just the one entry custom data, which is not in the dot .load for 11305. So I will make a change and add that in. Save the file. So that is now in the dot .load for 11305. So we've resolved the conflict. We've added the entry to the KB data dot load. The final step is to just make sure that this migrated KB can be compiled OK. And for that, we'll use the MC comp command with the manifest KB as input. Go to the migrated KB. KB manifest dot KB. Execute MC comp manifest dot KB. That compilation has completed without any problems and this migrated KB can be used as input on the upgrade to 11.305. This concludes the demo. Carrying on with best practices. As mentioned earlier, State Builder creates a new MCDB file by reading the current MCDB file and applying the transactions from the exact file. State Builder will run whichever is the sooner of the exact file reaching a certain size or after a period of time. The parameters State Build Interval and State Build Size control this. The State Build Interval has a default of 1 hour and the State Build Size has a default of 10M for megabytes. Avoid frequent State Builds as they are both CPU and disk IO intense. A good practice is that State Builder does not run less than every 10 minutes. For heavily loaded cells, that is cells with a high event rate, it will be necessary to increase State Build Size. It can be quite common to have a deduplication rule in place that would increase repeat count slot of an existing event and add some text to MC notes or MC operation slots and then drop the new event. This can cause problems if there is an event storm in that the MC notes or MC operation slots will grow unbounded and cause a performance problem in the cell, particularly with event propagation to other destinations. With version 11305, we have introduced two new parameters to prevent problems in this area. The first one is list limit for notes and operations, 
and is the limit of number of entries to keep on MC notes and MC operation slots. The other parameter is notes operations list reached action and is the action to be taken when the limit has been reached and has a default of discarding the entry. The other value that can be set for that parameter is remove oldest add latest, which as the name suggests, will remove the oldest entry and add the new one. If it is not possible to upgrade to 11.305 to take advantage of that feature, then check any deduplication rules that are in place. If need be, modify them to use NT count or op count function to check number of entries on the slot before adding one. For correlation policies and rules where the qualification is based on event class, initially with not many events in the cell, there is no noticeable performance impact. But over time, as the number of events in the cell increases, there will be a big performance impact. Performance will be much better if the number of events searched is minimal and the event qualification is as specific as possible. The mcontrol reload all or mcontrol reload data commands will remove all data instances in the cell and reload from the cell KB data directory. Data instances can be created via msend command and to then via administrator console are in a rule with the new data primitive. These data instances are not automatically stored in the cell KB data directory. To prevent loss of any custom data instances, they should be present in Baroque format in the cell KB data directory in a custom file and an entry for that file included in the .load file. As the TSIM operator console was deprecated in version 11.304 due to flash and no longer used, most of the event collectors can be removed from the cell by commenting them out or deleting them in the cell KB collectors .load file, then recompiling and reloading the KB. The collector files self underscore collector .mrl and catch all underscore collector .mrl are the minimum collectors that still need to be loaded for certain functionality. Event collector functionality has been replaced by event groups in the TrueSight console. Removing all but those two collectors will improve both the startup time and overall performance of the cell. Be mindful of event retention and do not use the cell as a repository to store old closed events for longer than necessary. If there is a need to keep events for a long period of time, such as for auditing purposes, then have events loaded into an external database or using the BMC reporting product offering. Event DB size parameter has a default of 360,000, and this is the maximum number of, of events that will be retained in the cell. If you're getting anywhere close to that number, then you should review the events to determine why. Closed events are automatically purged after one day, which is the default value for event DB keep closed parameter. The purging is based on when the event was last updated. If an event is closed, then it will be a day later that it is purged from the cell. Non-closed events are automatically purged after 30 days, which is the default value for event DB keep non-closed parameter. This does not apply to events of alarm class, as they are managed by the rate process. Overall cell performance and cell startup time will be better if the number of events is at a minimum. Care should be taken if event DB keep closed or event DB keep non closed parameters are to be increased. By default, the cell will only write to the log messages with a severity of information, warning, error, or fatal. A cell trace should be enabled to troubleshoot a specific issue, and doing so will write verbose messages to the log. It can be enabled dynamically with the MCFG trace command, or by modifying the mcell.conf and mcell.trace files, then restarting the cell. The default value for trace parameter in the mcell.conf file is yes anyway. Do not be afraid to enable trace, as even running with trace enabled for a period of time will not bring the system down. For rule tracing, trace rule level 2 should be set, either by modifying the mcell.conf file and restarting the cell, or dynamically with the mcontrol command. Trace rule ports all is the most verbose and should not be left on all the time, as it could cause a slowness in the cell due to the amount of login. For those that have been working on the cell for a long time, it is even more verbose than the old deprecated minus T option of MC Comp. It can be set either by modifying the mcell.conf file and restarting the cell, or dynamically with the mcontrol command. I will now do a general troubleshooting demo of the cell. A TSIM server has two remote cells, cell 1 and cell 2. All events from cell 1 are propagated to cell 2. Here in the TrueSight console, we are viewing the events from cell 1. If we change the event source to be cell 2, we have this message pop up to say that it cannot connect to the remote cell, cell 2. The remote cell is down or disconnected. So let's take a look and see if we can figure out what's wrong with cell 2. This is the server that cell 2 should be running on. 
First thing to do is to run an MC stat command to check the status of the cell to determine if it is running or not. From a command window, MC stat minus N and then the cell name. So it says it is not responding. This server has the cells cell one and cell two on it. So let's have a look in task manager to see if we see two M cell processes or just the one. This is task manager, M cell, exe that's the cell process there's only one running so i suspect that cell 2 is not actually running let's go and have a look at the m cell log to see what that shows for cell 2 in windows explorer go to the m cell home log and then the cell name directory open up the file m cell dash log it has a message here which indicates that it cannot bind to its port 1829 the most common reason for that is that there is another process running on that port so let's go and check that by running a netstat command. In a command prompt, execute command netstat minus aon pipe findstra 1829, which is the cell port. And we can see here that the last column here is a process ID 6604. That is the process that is bound to port 1829. Let's go back to task manager, sort on PID. Let's try and see what 6604 is. It's here, it is a Java process. If we go to the properties, it shows us where it was executed from. So it's a Java process. Interestingly, it looks like it could be the actual local integration service on this machine. So let's go and quickly check the configuration of that ISN. Back in Windows Explorer, agent, custom, conf, there is this configuration file, pronet.conf, which contains the ports that the ISN will bind to. And we can see here, line six, there's a mistake on this line. For some reason, somebody has edited this accidentally and put in there an incorrect port. The correct port should actually be 12124. We we'll save that change. Go to the services applet. Restart the ISN. So that's now started. Back at the command prompt, run the netstat command again. Nothing is bound to port 1829. So let's go ahead and start the cell. We've got the services window open still. So we'll start it here. And it's failed to start. So let's go and take a look again in the mcell home log cell2 mcell dash log file and it has lots and lots of errors about cannot read knowledge base file in the cell kb rules directory it can't find a whole bunch of wic files the wic files are created by the mc comp command when recompiling the cell kb and is the compiled mrl file let's have a look in the kb rules directory to see if those files exist or not server etc cell name kb rules so i don't have the wic files there so something's happened to them i don't know if somebody has accidentally deleted them but to fix this we should recompile the cell kb back on the command prompt mc comp minus n cell 2. go back to the kb rules directory and we can see here that we have all these wic files now so that looks good let's go ahead and start the setup that shows us running and we'll just run the MC stack command again. That confirms it's running. So let's go back to the TrueSight console and see if we can see the events now. We can see the events here in cell two. Go back to cell one. It seems though that whilst we see the events in cell two, there are events from a particular host which are not seen anymore. And those are events from a host called prod007. So these are the events in cell one. If we do a search on prod 007, and this search capability of remote cells is something that we added in 11.305. So doing a search on cell one, we can see 132 events. We change the event source back to cell two. Do the search for prod 007, no events. So it could be that either those events are not propagated to cell two, or there is a rule that's dropping them on cell two. To help troubleshoot this problem, we will enable cell trace and rule trace for cell two. 
from a command prompt execute command mcfg trace minus n cell name all all std err that enables the verbose cell trace and we also need to enable rule trace and we do that with the m control command and control minus n the cell name trace rule on that's enabled what we now need to do is wait for a, an event from the prod 007 host to be seen in cell one and then we can look at the cell logs for cell two to see what happened to it go back to cell one do a search on prod 007 so here's one here let's take an export of this in baroque format here is the event and if we have a look here mc propagation slot we can see here it was propagated to cell 2 and this is the event handle of that event in cell 2 let's now have a look at the m cell log for cell 2 and do a search on that particular number go back to the log directory Here is the event 13268. This is how it was received by the cell. We can see here that it's going through the raw engine. Some slots are being changed on it. And then interestingly, just at the bottom, it has these messages here. The event discarded by no pass filter and it's been removed. These messages tell us that there's a suppression policy in place. We just discarded that event and this line here gives us the data handle and mcu did value of that particular suppression policy so let's go and have a look at that policy you can either do that via the administrator console or via mquery commands against the cell i will show you how to do it through mquery so make a note of the data handle number 1123 back on the command prompt mquery minus n the cell name minus d for data minus w for where data underscore handle 1123 let's get it in baroque format we can see here it's a suppression policy the name of it is suppress host description suppress all events for host per clq and there's a selector here as well which is mentioned so let's have a look at that selector query minus n cell name minus d minus a for class selector minus w for where name and it's crq get that in baroque format as well this is the selector here and we can see here it's for event class where mc host equals prod 007 so this has been put in place for a reason and i know for a fact that this crq actually expired yesterday but obviously somebody hasn't cleaned it up so what we can do to quickly resolve the issue is we will actually disable the suppression policy again you can either do that in the administrator console but i'll demonstrate how to do it from the command line we still made a note of the data handle number 1123 we will run an mposter command and set the enabled slot to be zero which means disabled mposter minus n cell name minus d for data minus u the data handle number minus b for slot enabled equals zero let's just run the m query again to verify that change has been made and we can see here enabled zero this policy is now disabled let's go back to the console let's change the event source back to cell two we can see here that events are now coming in since we've disabled that policy as that has resolved the issue, we will now go and disable the cell traces. Back on a command prompt, M control minus N cell name, trace rule off, and MCFG trace cell name, all verbose no. And that has disabled the cell trace. This concludes the demo. TrueSight Operations Management has its own troubleshooting section in the BMC documentation. Purpose or goal of these troubleshooting guides is to understand, identify, and self solve. And the event you are not able to self solve, then you already have the items and data needed to open a better support case. As highlighted on this TrueSight page, you can see the troubleshooting section is located in the navigation pane, as well as the link highlighted on the bottom right of the screen. Let's now look at troubleshooting some common issues with the cell. If there is an event policy, such as blackout, 
propagation or notification that is not being triggered and the selector for the policy is based on enrichment by a custom rule, this would be due to the custom rule executing after the policy related rules, which are in im underscore internal .mrl file. The solution is to modify the .load file in the cell kb rules directory so that the custom rule is executed before im underscore internal, then recompile and reload the kb. You may see a problem whereby in the TrueSight console, when clicking on event details for an event in a remote cell, nothing is displayed or an error message is seen. This can occur if the class definitions are not the same on all cells, including the TSIM server cell. The Elasticsearch data index on TrueSight presentation server is built from the TSIM server cell KB class definitions. And that cell needs to know about any classes the remote cell also has. Compare the class definitions on all cells and add the missing classes to the TSIM server cell. If you have multiple TSIM servers, then do this on all of them. Recompile the cell KB and restart the TSIM server. Finally, on the TrueSight presentation server, execute command TSSH event reinitialize to reinitialize the Elasticsearch data. With version 11.303 and higher, if the TSIM server high availability cells are out of sync, there will be a self-monitoring event to indicate this. Remote HA cells can also go out of sync, but there is no self-monitoring event for those. The typical reason for them going out of sync is if both primary and secondary cells were down at the same time. To resolve this, stop both primary and secondary cells, delete the contents of the var directory on the secondary, copy the content of var directory from primary to secondary, then start the primary cell and shortly afterwards start the secondary cell. If there is a dynamic enrichment policy in place for alarm class events to enrich message slot, you could face the problem whereby if alarm event severity changes, which also results in message slot change, the dynamic enrichment is not reapplied. By default, dynamic enrichment executes once, which is when the event is created. The solution is in the administrator console, modify the dynamic enrichment policy and set redo fields to a slot which will re-trigger the enrichment. For example, Severity slot as shown in the image. This references slide has links for troubleshooting infrastructure events, as well as a general troubleshooting link for the cell and how to troubleshoot a cell startup problem. In summary, we covered a higher level overview of the cell, then moved on to some key configuration items, which included description of the contents of VAR directory. We reviewed the best practice items before moving on to general troubleshooting. And that concludes my presentation. Back to you, Greg. Thank you. And now I'll take us through the self-help and contacting BMC. The YouTube channel where this webinar will be posted is available at this link. It contains past webinars as well as a rich set of how-to videos. The Connect with TrueSight webinar schedule that contains future webinars as well as our past webinars is available at this community's link and to contact technical support via web, phone, email, as well as these social channels are available through these links. That will conclude our session today. Thank you for attending.